guys and welcome back to another vlog. It's currently Monday morning. I have got quite an exciting day today. Apologies for the sheer lack of uploads at the moment, especially when it comes to vlogs. But I'm sure those of you who are navigating the post Oh my god, I look very interesting at the moment. Um, the post-uni transition. I'm sure you guys can relate to this when I say that I just don't feel like I have anything going on. Um, or at least like I don't have as much going on as I used to back when I was a student and I feel like my life has gotten considerably less interesting. Apart from this week, of course, because this week's actually quite an interesting week. So even though I have started my PhD applications and of course I'm still applying for jobs, there's only so much I can show you of like a computer screen screen and me just like typing away at it before it gets really boring so I've just thought it's probably best to hold off until I feel like I can actually show you something that isn't a laptop screen. However this week is something that I'd like to call a bit of an ebb and flow week where like even though I have got a bit more interesting things going on parts of this week are still very much like basically my everyday life where like I'm just sat at home trying to get a job trying to do my PhD application and it doesn't really feel like a lot's going on but the reason why I am doing a full face of makeup is because I am actually off to London London for a very exciting event today. The event isn't until actually six o'clock at night, but I wanna give myself enough time to actually get down to London. I think filming for the last five minutes just showed me how much I suck at chatting to the camera and doing my makeup at the same time. Like, I just can't multitask. I'm literally just staring at my palette right now, like, what am I doing? But the reason why I am going to London today is because as part of my role as a youth board member for the UK charity Tender, which is a position that I mentioned I got in my last video, I have basically been invited to Parliament or like at least like the House of Commons for a domestic abuse and sexual violence event. And there's going to be loads of like big names and leaders in the field of violence against women and girls in that room tonight. Honestly, I feel like I'm going to be fangirling the entire time. This, as you guys know is a field that I'm really passionate about and I want to do my PhD in and I would hopefully like to have a career in one day so to have the opportunity to go to this event tonight I literally feel so lucky and grateful. I think from the sounds of it on the invite we're gonna have an hour of like speeches followed by a drinks reception which will be nice even though I'm kind of nervous for that because I feel like that's just gonna <laughs> obviously have to involve networking and I feel like I suck at networking especially since like I don't really know exactly who from like tender and like the youth board are going to this event so I feel like I'm kind of oh god my island is already messing up <laughs> is that equal so yeah I'm excited but obviously still a bit nervous as well I think even if it wasn't in the house commons it would still feel like a big deal because now that um, I'm just at home applying for like grad jobs and doing my PhD application um, I don't tend to like go out to like events or out the house as much I just don't <laughs> go out as much anymore which I feel like sounds a bit sad but I think that's also just the reality of like finishing university and moving home that's definitely not even anymore why have I done that I feel like I've messed that up now yeah, definitely messed that up. Okay, so now that I've finished makeup, I'm gonna go make myself a quick lunch and then sort the last few things I need to do before we leave, which includes grabbing my passport because one thing I forgot to mention is I have to arrive at Westminster like 30 minutes before the event because apparently their security is like next level. Like I said, it's like airport security, which I'm kind of obviously not surprised because it is the government, but yeah. Very intense, a little bit scary, so I need to go grab my passport. I was just gonna bring my provisional, but I might bring my passport just as a backup because you never know and the last thing I want to do is like get stuck outside. Also I feel like one of my eyelashes is looking like a lot fluffier than the other and I promise you they're from the same pack. I don't know why this one, I don't know if it's showing on camera but I just feel like in the viewfinder right now this one is looking significantly more like intense. So I hope it doesn't look like that in real life otherwise people at the event tonight are going to think of like mix match two different sets of eyelashes. Okay so this is what I'm planning for for the oh bye Max. See how it is.
At around 5.30pm, I walked over to Portcullis House, which is where the event was being held. Apparently, it's home to the offices of over 200 members of parliament, and no joke, is situated right next to the Palace of Westminster, so this was our view. After going through security and being handed a visitor pass, I was given a name tag too, which was very exciting. The conference room was filled with funders, people from the world of policy, and other big names. For instance, I literally had Amy Lee Hickman sat behind me, who you might recognise from Tracy Beaker and Season 4 of You. The purpose of the event was to see Tender launch their 10-year prevention strategy against domestic abuse and sexual violence. As my master's dissertation centred around domestic abuse prevention and education, I remember discussing Tender's impactful projects, so this felt like a proper full circle moment. This is what the conference room looked like after the speeches. We heard from a range of people including Tender's CEO, the Domestic Abuse Commissioner for England and Wales, Jess Phillips MP, teachers and young people who all feature in this photo we took together. Oh my god, I'm using my be real. Do you want to be my be real? <laughs> Before I forget. After a bit of networking, I left Portcullis House. This is a bit of what it looks like inside. Handed back my visitor pass, then went to meet my mom, who managed to get the shot of Big Ben chiming. Hey guys, so I'm now picking you guys up on Wednesday afternoon. After having such a like busy day on Monday, going to London and getting back late, I ended up having quite a laid back day yesterday, like a day to recharge my batteries and not be as productive. You know when you intend to get work done, but then it just doesn't like really good plan. Well, that was me yesterday. <laughs> Speaking of the London event though, honestly, it was just the best day. It was a bit anxiety inducing at the start, trying to get into parliament and trying to get through security and stuff and making sure I'm at the right building, but the event was just like incredible. I ended up just getting way more out of the event than I ever expected. One of the people that was speaking at the event was the Domestic Abuse Commissioner, Nicole Jacobs, and I, I'm gonna sound like a proper fangirl right now, and I probably did look like a proper fangirl to her, so. Her reports were just so monumental when I was doing my master's dissertation on domestic abuse, and I just found them so interesting to read, especially since like I wanna do a career in policy. And she was one of the people in the room that I just didn't think I'd really have a chance at like getting to speak to, just because of how in demand they were. Like everyone was wanting to speak to them, so I was thinking like, the chances of me getting to speak to her is very slim, but just the fact that I, you know, in the same room with her, getting to hear her speak so passionately about domestic abuse education, like, that is enough for me. But little did I know it was going to get so much better. After the event had finished, we had a bit of networking and she actually came over to our like little group of um, youthful members. And after telling her about what I plan to do with my PhD and like how passionate I am about changing policy and working in the sector, she basically gave me her business card and said she'd be more than happy to have me come and kind of shadow her team at her London office just to see how like everything works like behind the scenes when it comes to like policy and like honestly guys I am just so shook like I think I'm still processing it like I thought I would just be like watching these guys speak let alone actually having the opportunity to speak to them and then getting invited by them to get to do more stuff with them that's just <sighs> such an amazing opportunity considering recently I've been finding it so hard um, to get my leg in the door in terms of like policy. To get hired you need like a stack of experience but then it's like how do I get experience if no one's gonna hire me or give me a chance? So the fact that she's like yeah come to my office I'm like oh my gosh. So yeah that happened. So since yesterday was a bit of a reset day and I didn't get as much as I wanted done I'm hoping for this afternoon to get a lot of things kind of ticked off. Um, on my to-do list and between 6.30 and 8 I'm actually um, participating in a research like study it's like an online zoom call for a domestic abuse charity so yeah this week is very <laughs> domestic abuse research themed so yeah I'm gonna go and get on with ticking off those little to-dos and get back to you in a bit. After running a few errands and nipping to B&M I logged on to a CSW 68 event. If you follow my Instagram you'll know that recently I was selected as an official delegate for UN Women UK so this means I have the option Opportunity to take part in virtual global events for leading voices, all relating to this year's specific theme of financial gender inequality. This one here I found particularly insightful where they discussed designing more feminist cities, for instance introducing baby changing facilities in male public bathrooms to cater for fathers. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> 
<laughs> you coming to join me? Hey guys, so it's a little bit later now. I'm currently at my granddad's as I am babysitting Busty who is currently looking out the window. I've realised since I haven't obviously been vlogging really for the last like six months. Oh hello. Hello. <coughs> what? You're such an attention seeker. <laughs> what up Busty? <laughs> you got something to say to the camera? No? Okay. This dog. As I was saying, I've realised since I haven't really been able to upload YouTube videos in the last like six months, you guys haven't seen like any of Buster on YouTube since September. Unless, of course, you've been following me on Instagram, which you'll have seen him obviously growing for the last few months. Literally, the last time on YouTube you guys will have seen Buster is when he was like the size of a guinea pig. Now, he's like a little miniature dog. I think he's about eight nine months now literally i feel like time is passing so fast but yeah he's turned into like such a little rascal this little fuss part aren't you busty he's currently staring at me growing into a big boy now aren't you busty i can't believe his head is like the size of mine now look at you oh he's become so snuggly haven't you now not as bitey such a little smiley boy. I swear like when we first caught him he was so serious for like the first um like three months of his life and we were like oh my god this dog generally doesn't like us. And now he just won't stop smiling and it's the cutest thing ever. <coughs> what? If you don't give him attention for like five seconds he starts screaming. <coughs> what? What? One of the cutest things Buster does at the moment is whenever my granddad or my mom have gone out he'll literally just sit like this on my granddad's chair out the window looking for them. I feel like sometimes he looks so human-like. <laughs> We've been calling him Dracula as well because I don't know if you guys can see but he's got massive like front teeth. Can I see your teeth? No? Okay. Look at the size of these teeth. Oh my god, hello. That's the... <laughs> what are you doing? This evening I took part in an online focus group for a domestic abuse charity, sharing my experiences as a young person who's experienced it. I can't lie, it kind of felt weird not being on the other side of the study, having recently done my dissertation on domestic abuse and young people. Morning guys, it's Friday now. I think it's like 11. 30 I want to say. I didn't film any of yesterday because apart from going to Ikea for a few hours with my mom I didn't really do anything else. I don't think I feel like yesterday was one of those days where it just like flew by and before you know it the evening I just come around and I'm just like what have I actually done today? <laughs> Which I feel like is a lot of my days. I don't know if anyone else relates to this, but since I've moved home, I feel like my whole routine has just gone out the window. It's really hard not to like beat myself up about like not being more disciplined with myself and not getting like loads done between nine and five. Like I don't know whether it's because I was so used to having a structure when I was a university student and now I don't have one unless I create myself one. And I think over the last six months, there have been a lot of moments where like, I've struggled to just get out of bed in the morning and feel motivated. I feel like I've lost my purpose at the moment. Like I'm kind of stuck in limbo, you know, while I wait to hear back from job applications and while I crack on with my PhD application and wait for that to eventually start. So if there's anyone who's watching this who also relates to what I'm feeling, please feel free to comment below because it can definitely be so isolating. The reason why I'm sat in my booty is because today is gonna be another like work from home day. And I thought since it's Friday, you know, I could do a bit of extra comfort especially since like tomorrow is going to be quite like a busy day because tomorrow i'm also going back to london i feel like this week has just been such a weird week it's either just been me at home <laughs> kind of like just doing random admin things or me rushing around london but yeah i'm back in london tomorrow afternoon and i'll tell you a bit more about that tomorrow i have got a few things lined up this afternoon which i'm hoping to crack on with so even though it is a friday and even though i am in my comfortable clothes i I'm gonna try and be like more productive. I hate that word. <laughs> Getting on with my job application, which I think 
is due this weekend. And then at one, I'm going to be attending a Zoom Q&A hosted by the University of Cambridge. The hour Q&A is basically designed for anyone who has questions about postgraduate study or doing a PhD at Cambridge. As you guys know, I applied to Cambridge for my master's and I got in, and they are also one of the places that I'm looking to do my PhD at. So yeah, let's go on with this glorious Friday. Well, it's not really glorious actually, it's grey skies. After attending the Cambridge Q&A, I was in quite a creative mood, so I grabbed my ever-growing collection of beads and jewelry making kits and started making a friendship bracelet. Basically, I'm going to see Taylor Swift in June for one of her era's tour dates, and since it's become a tradition among the fans to make bracelets relating to Taylor and swap them at the concerts, I thought I might as well start early and make mine a few months before our concert date. Dan's, of course, coming along with me. He's become quite the Swifty, and we've made a long list of Taylor Swift references for the bracelets, some slightly more unhinged than others. <laughs> Saturday was an early start as I was heading to London again for some volunteering work. We stopped off a service station for a bit as the heavens decided to open up and grab a quick Greggs. Here is Dan, my lovely chauffeur for the day. After two hours of driving, we headed towards Highgate, which is where Tender's offices are, the UK charity that I attended the Parliament event with on Monday. Every month, we have a youth board meeting to discuss Tender's projects, this one being our first in-person meeting, and just so happened to be in the same week as the Parliament event. Normally, it's all online and I'm not travelling back and forth to London like this, but in today's three-hour in-person meeting, I had the opportunity to meet some of the other youth board members and Tender's staff face-to-face -face for the first time, which was a lovely change from a screen. Like I said, my role involves influencing and producing Tender's projects to ensure they keep being impactful to young people and we actually had the chance to try out a few of the activities they do with young people to teach them about healthy relationships. My favourite activity was hands down this one where in pairs we had to make identical play objects but blindfolded so it really tests your ability to communicate, listen to other people and respect each other's boundaries as you obviously can't see where the other person is. All of these attributes you can relate to a healthy relationship. Oh my god they actually <laughs> Turns out the entire room made snowmen without realising it, so we must have some like telepathic bond between us. But this was my pair's snowman attempt, pretty good I think. Hey guys, so I'm sitting here editing right now. For those who are actually wondering where I am, I'm currently sat in Dan's university studio flat here in Sheffield while he's at work. But I realised I didn't film an outro. I just wanted to touch on something real quick though. I feel like this is probably me being like really irrational and worrying about things way too much but I guess I worry about my blogs not being as interesting as they used to be back when I was a master's student which is most likely not the case because I literally went to parliament in this vlog which is so cool but I guess like I mentioned earlier on in this video I've been in a bit of a weird headspace since finishing my masters and I think that's spreading to how I feel about my vlogs and it's why I've also not been posting as much so if you are watching this right now and you're enjoying it I can't even begin to explain how much I appreciate you right now. So yeah, thank you so 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 much for watching this video. It's really nice to have something to post for once while I try to figure out this next stage of my life and try to desperately get myself out of this creative funk that I'm in at the moment. I love you all and I will see you in the next video. Bye!